Mr. Merkage here, and today I'm going to show you how to create a basic spammer for some of these anonymous uh, question websites. Now, what they are is you can ask someone a question and then they'll reply to it anonymously and they won't know who you are. Uh, the thing is, people like to spam these links about, and some people like to spam them back with random stuff. Um, you can see this is a random account I found via Google, and it hasn't been used for a thousand days, so I suppose I don't mind me sending a few testers messages to this account um, uh, but basically all we're going to do is send the request to this page using a post request instead of we go into this page and type in a message and sending it now I suppose you could actually load this page into a web browser in your project and then enter the text and submit the button that way uh, but using a web, a web request it'll be a lot easier for us and we can uh, multiply the process many times to increase the spammer. Now, so what we'll do is we'll view the page source really quick and we'll go down to the form. So this is the form that we're interested in. We just got the submit button and the text area which the question goes in and there's two hidden ones which is the user ID. Now this is the most important little bit because that decides who the question is going to. Now our program hard codes the ID in uh, the thing is um, if you were to want your program to enter a username what you'd need to do is go to this page uh, scrape through the source and scrape the user ID out yourself before you go ahead and use the spammer that's not a problem anyway um, it's easily done uh, so what we're going to do actually is quickly open up the developer tools and mine is in a new tab but what we're going to do is send a quick test request to the site and then go to our developer tools and it will tell us uh, what we're interested in. Now we're just interested in the index page and getting the headers from that. Uh, so as you can see the request URL is this one here. So this is the one we're interested in. And then this is just some header stuff which was sent with the request from our browser. Uh, but we're mainly interested in the form data here and also the URL. So what we'll do now, now we know this information, we can go into our project. Now this is just a standard C sharp project with nothing in. I did actually make this project inside this form earlier so a few of the things are imported already and you'll see what I mean. So we'll just enter a button and we'll go in like this. Now you can see I've just got a few things uh, imported already just to make things easier for me. Uh, now all we want to do in this button click is make a new web request a uh, web request and we'll just call it rec for now and that's going to be equal to web request dot create and then we'll create a request to the URL that we're interested in which is this one and now we need we can specify a few things to the request actually so uh, request dot now we specify the method and that is going to be post. We don't use get because we want to send data to this uh, in this case. After that uh, you can have the uh, content l uh, length and we can't actually do that yet because we didn't specify our parameters. So what we'll do really quick is we'll just say we need to use a byte array and that's going to be e uh, called data actually and it'll be equal to uh, encoding wherever that is encoding dot ACII dot get bytes and then this is where we'll place our parameters so we'll go to the developer tools and go down and you can see here we've only got four now HP is always blank at least from my experience trying to do this but I include it anyway because maybe their PHP file checks for if this parameter is set so we'll just leave it anyway so first of all we have let's close that off we've got Ajax and then that is equal to post underscore question and then we have the user which will be equal to this user ID of this account that I found and then they have the question we'll hold we'll hard code that actually to hi or whatever and then after that they have HP which is not set to anything and that should be it for that now all we need to specify 
the request dot content length is going to be equal to data dot length and also this won't work if you don't specify the content type and we're going to have that set to uh, application forward slash x dash www dash form dash url encoded just like that and now after that we need to write the data to the stream so we can say we we'll use a using block we'll say using stream stream uh, and that's going to be equal to request dot get uh, request stream just like that and then inside here we'll say stream dot write and we'll write our data to that uh, for the offset that will be zero and then for the count that will be uh, data dot length and that will be that for the writing part now underneath that we're going to use a series of more using statements actually to get the re the response from our request and sort through that response so we can read it and print it out. Uh, so first of all we'll start with the first one uh, we're going to be using a web response and we'll just call that resp for now and that is going to be equal to our request dot get response now inside this one we will want another one right away and we'll say using stream stream again now we can use the same one because it's inside or outside of this block and this time this is going to be equal to our response uh, dot get response stream and then inside here we'll have one more where we can access it so this time we're going to be using a stream reader and then because we, we actually want to read the data from the stream uh, we'll just call that SR for now and that will be equal to a new stream reader and we want that to read our stream of course now inside here we can do whatever we want with the stream the SR variable because that contains uh, the stuff that we want to know so to prove that this is working or to see that it's working we'll just say message box dot show and we'll say sr dot read to end read to the end and now we'll fire this up and see if it's working how it should be uh, it should be so we'll hit go and you can see your question has been sent to Emily Valkov uh, whatever so we know our question has been sent now the thing is we can't see our question on our page because she has to reply to it but her question was sent so I've not actually installed this app on my phone or the website but this would send a lot of notifications I'm guessing to the person's account and that is just it to send one uh, or one message to the person now let's say you wanted to make this uh, into the spammer now we could use multi-threading obviously the better option and to do that we can just use uh, parallel dot four and we'll say from zero to however much you want really for the however many times you want to do it I'll just say ten ten times and then we'll use the i variable but we're not actually going to be using the i at all we don't we don't need the eye for anything we're just going to have it there it's just to be there so what we'll do is we'll copy our request this time we'll paste it into our for loop and we don't actually want to show this message 10 times we'll just we'll just uh, comment that one out for now what we could do maybe is have some sort of counter what you can do is you can say if uh, sr dot read to end dot contains let's say if it contains sent we know it was sent so we can do something with that like maybe you could you could process it here to know that it was sent and say else uh, failure do something on a failure because sometimes it will say oh you didn't have the the question wasn't right or things like that so you, you should actually process or read it and then process it in the correct way uh, what I'll do here is just uh, 
maybe we could have a label and it'll be equal to zero by default and you could add you could add on to that label every time uh, f for the sake of it I'll just put the message box back in and I'll do it only three times or something like that and then we'll hit go and the message boxes were blank maybe because take this away and we'll try it without that you can see it did send the message multiple times uh, it needs a bit of work obviously um, but there you go there's the main request the post request sending the message to the user don't forget that the user ID is very important what you could do is have a text box just in here like that and then add on just here the text box one dot text now the capitals are not right I know that let me just sort that out and then there you go that will send your text from here to the user and then what you might want is another box here for the username what you'll need to do is navigate before you do the whole spamming process navigate to this and then scrape the user ID from the source and it is right uh, there so it's easy enough to get I just showed you the basic example on how to send the request and how to get the spammer working you can do what you want with it you don't need to show the message box that is just to show you that they did send and the message was successfully sent uh, but there you go there's the basic request and you can spam it as many times as you want a thousand times just go ahead and do whatever you wish so that is the basic spammer for uh, an anonymous website so there you go if you did enjoy the video please feel to leave a like and a comment and i'll see you next time